Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem shortest subarray with or at least k2. So this is actually a relatively easy problem. And I'm not saying that to make you feel bad about yourself if you weren't able to solve it. I'm saying that because I know for sure that one day you will think that this is an easy problem as well. I'll show you the exact thought process that you need to be able to solve this kind of category of problems consistently, like without failure. I can show it to you because it's actually pretty easy. And the main reason that I'm able to recognize that this is an easy problem is because I have a pretty deep understanding of this pattern of problems, like this pattern of sliding window problems. They all have significant overlap. For example, these two problems are very, very related to today's problem. I'll be using the intuition from the solutions from these problems to actually explain today's problem. And I'm not just mentioning this as like a shameless plug for the website. I know most of you know about this already. I just think it's so important to be able to relate similar problems together, because if you don't, then you always feel like there's some random trick that you just don't know, but actually there is significant overlap. Suppose we're given an input array like this one, and we're given a k value, uh, 10 in this case. So somewhat similar to the example down here, we want to return the smallest special array. So some subarray from this one, it has to be continuous. We want to minimize the length of this special subarray and then return that length, not the subarray, but the length. Now, what exactly is a special subarray? Well, if you take the bitwise or of the subarray, so this subarray, uh, bitwise like binary zero or binary one, sorry, is something like this. Binary eight looks like this. And if you or two numbers together, this is very important, or will never unset a bit, it'll only set a bit. So if you take these two numbers and or them, if there's a bit set in any of those numbers, then the bit will be set in the output. But if it's not set in any of them, like all of them don't have that bit set, then it's going to be zero. So it'll be zero, zero, and then a one over here. This is binary nine. So that means if this subarray has an or of nine, it's actually not a special array because special arrays have to have an or greater than or equal to the K value. And this is not. But if we look at this continuous subarray, if you look at the bitwise two, and a bitwise one, but that's actually not necessary. Uh, in any case, if you or all of these together, I think you'll get something like 11. And so that is, of course, greater than or equal to K. So this is a special array. The length of it is three. So now that we know what the problem is, the brute force solution would just be to check every single subarray. Perhaps starting at this one, we go like this, 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 and just keep going, right? Nested loops. Then start from here, do the same thing just a couple nested loops. And the problem with that is that there are n squared subarrays. Yes, for each of them, we can get the or in pretty much constant time and then just do the comparison. That's easy enough. And yes, this is a working solution, but we can do better. Now, this is my process for solving a problem like this or rather optimizing the solution. Think about what I'm about to say and listen to it very carefully. This brute force solution is yes, looking at every subarray, but more specifically, this is what we're doing. We're checking, is this subarray special? Is this special, et cetera, et cetera. Do you notice any kind of repeated work or maybe redundant work? Like that's what you should notice. And it's not something you're gonna automatically notice. You specifically have to ask yourself this question. Is there repeated work? Is there something redundant? Yeah, there literally is. Think about this. If I found that this is a special array, what I'm really doing when I have like nested loops for I and then for J, the I pointer is the left. And I'm basically getting every subarray starting from here. Once I find a special subarray, I don't really need to keep going because I already found the shortest subarray starting at this position. So next, I want to find the shortest subarray starting at the next position. And that's literally the solution to the problem. Now I just told you how to optimize it to a linear time solution. Wasn't that observation pretty simple to make? Like why keep going? Like if I found that this is a special subarray, why would I care to know if this is a special subarray? I don't care. This is of length four. The other one was of length three. I'm trying to minimize them. So you just have to look for an observation like that. And you have to specifically look for it. It might not just come magically by reading the problem description 10 times. Take out a piece of pen and paper, take some notes, pause the video if you have to, 
do whatever you need to, but do not skip this step. Do not skip it. So now, how does that observation that I mentioned help us solve the problem? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to basically have those same pointers, I and J, but instead of having them in two separate loops, nested loops, we're going to have them together. So I'm going to have my two pointers, pointer here, and the right pointer will be here as well. So two pointers, we'll check the OR of this. It's two, it's not greater than K. So we are going to shift the right pointer now. We're still looking for a, a window that is special. And it's important to know that this works because OR, like I said at the beginning, is only going to make a number bigger, not smaller. It's only going to set a bit, not unset a bit. So that's another like important observation you have to make. You have to intentionally make these observations. And so we're, we're still going, we're still trying to increase the array because we're trying to increase the number. So then we go here and then we'll find that, okay, the OR now is equal to 10. Okay, so right now my number in binary looks something like this. Okay, so now we're going to shrink the window, right? This is where things get a little bit tricky. So now we shrink the window, we shift the left pointer here. So now we want the or of just this. How do we undo that? How do we get rid of this? We know that binary two looks like this, zero, zero, one, zero, specifically this part. That's binary two. The naive thing to do here would be to say, okay, so if we're removing two, then we want to undo the or that we originally did, which set this bit. So, okay, so that means we want to unset the bit. We want to change it back to a zero. And yeah, that does make sense. But how do you know that something else didn't actually set that bit? And I'm not just talking about another two. For example, if we had another two over here, and then we like shrink the window, we get rid of this guy. Technically, this bit, the bit over here should still be set because we still have a two in our window. So this is kind of a problem, right? Like I said, it's not just two that might set this bit. The number three in binary looks like this. So that's also going to set this bit and it's actually gonna set this bit as well. So what do we do? Well, if you've gone through a comprehensive list like this one, you'll probably know the solution, specifically the one from this. Rather than just knowing if a bit is set or unset, which is kind of similar to this problem where we have like a hash set, which either contains a character or it doesn't, we can do the solution from this problem, which is slightly more advanced. Instead of using a hash set, you have a hash map, which counts the instances of a character so then when you shift your window, rather than getting rid of a particular character, you decrement the count of it. So in our case, we are not dealing with characters, we're dealing with bits. So we have 32 bits in total. Generally, that's a safe assumption. We're dealing with 32-bit integers in this problem. So rather than setting and unsetting a bit, which if we were doing it this way, we could just have like a single integer that we could maintain. But now, rather than doing that, I want to know the count for each bit. So I could use a hash map if I want to, to do that, but I can also use an array of, let's say, size 32. And so each one of these will correspond to some bit, kind of like this. And rather than just being ones and zeros here, some of these might be two or three, depending on the number of times a bit has been set. So enough talking, let me show you the solution now. So we were at this window, and technically, like our counts were one for each of the bits. So uh, then I can shift this pointer over here. We get rid of the two. We would decrement that by one. And now we're here. So this number is nine. It's not greater than or equal to K. So far, the smallest window we found is of length three. We will now try to uh, shift the right pointer. It's going to be over here. We take uh, the number four, which looks like this in binary, or it here. It's worth mentioning how exactly are we going to do that because remember this is an array now and we have a number over here so we can't just do the or operation it's not going to be that simple what we're going to do is for each of these bits we're going to look at it if it's a zero we're going to look at the corresponding position increment it by one or sorry if it's a one we're going to increment it by one if it's a zero then we're going to increment it by zero not do anything so uh, in this case this is the only bit that's set so that's the bit that would be set in the results so uh, scribbling this out, we will now have this. And this number is greater than or equal to K. So this is a window of size three, but now let's try to minimize it. Let's look at this left pointer over here, and we see that this is already a special window. So let's find a special window starting from here. That is the smallest. Shifting the pointer, we're here now. And when we do shift that pointer, we want to decrement the count of all the bits that are set in this number. This is binary uh, 0001, so we want to decrement the count of this bit, so it will now be set back down to zero. This number is greater than or equal to k, 
So the smallest window we found is of size two. Once again, we will shift the window. I'll read kind of draw all this. So I'm going to take this left pointer, shift it over here. The bits that were set were these. This is eight. It looks like that. So we unset that bit and we will end up with this. And this number is uh, this window and it's not greater than or equal to K. So now we can try to find the window starting from here that is special if one exists. So now we're going to take our right pointer and shift it over here. This is 11. So I believe in binary, it looks like this eight, two and one. So we'll take each of these bits, add them there. I think we'll end up with this. This is valid. This is greater than or equal to K. This window is valid. It's of size two. So now let's try to shrink it, try to find the next special window starting from here. And for us to do that, we have to unset the bit over here. So this will turn into a zero. This is this window. It's also greater than or equal to K. So this is the smallest window that we found, the one that starts at this element. And if you notice this process, this algorithm actually did find the smallest window starting from every single position. If that's what we were looking for, we could have done that and returned that instead. But that's not what we're looking for. This is a relatively simple sliding window problem with some bit manipulation tricks added. And those bit manipulation tricks are going to be easier to explain, I think, in the drawing explanation. They're not really tricks. It's just some conversions. Time complexity here is going to be linear constant space. So I'm going to initialize my left pointer to zero. And for my right pointer, I'm going to just have it in a for loop. It's going to be incremented every single time. Inside of the loop is where we will update the left pointer. This is a pretty classic sliding window template. The result we're trying to return here is the length of the smallest window. And it's actually possible that we do not find the smallest window. Uh, so in that case, we would want to return negative one. So I'm going to actually set this to a really large number infinity so that we can try to minimize it. But if we don't, I'm going to return negative one. So return negative one if result is still equal to infinity. Otherwise, return the actual value that we uh, found. Now in this loop, remember, we actually have a array that we want to maintain. I'm going to call that bits. I'm going to make it of size 32. It's going to be all zeros initially. Now inside the loop, we want for the current number nums at index R. For every bit set in there, we want to increment the count here for this uh, variable. So I'll go ahead and do that uh, right here. So I'm going to go for I in range 32 times. We at the very least know we got to check like all 32 bits. Well, I guess you don't necessarily have to. The main reason I'm doing it this way, like we could have alternatively done something like this while let's say nums of R is greater than zero and then constantly shifted it to the right inside of the loop. But we also want to know the position of each bit. That's why I'm using I because inside of this loop, I'm going to do something like this bits of I, I'm going to set it. I'm either going to increment it or whatever. I want to increment bits of I by one if the ith bit is set in nums of R. How do I know if that's the case? Well, if nums of R ended with the ith bit is non-zero, and we can get that pretty easily like this. Just take one, shift it to the left i times. Initially, this will be zero. That'll give us zero, zero, one. Then we'll shift it by one. So that'll give us this. And then we'll shift it again. That'll give us this, et cetera, et cetera. So we go ahead and do that. Now, we want to actually take these bits and compare it to K. Is it greater than or equal to K? Is bits greater than or equal to K? The problem is you can't compare an array with a number. So what I'm going to do is convert the number into an integer. I'm going to call that integer the current or. I'll initially set it to zero and I will go through every bit just like I did right now up above in range 32. And then I want to take that bit. If it's set, the ith bit is set, then I want to take it and add it to the current or number up above. So to current or, I want to add the ith bit. This is the ith bit, one shifted to the left by i. So now I have my current or, that's what I'm gonna use to compare with k. Inside of here, I want to update my result. I wanna minimize it, so it'll be the minimum of what it already is and the current window, which is this. And if it's valid, then I definitely want to increment my left pointer. And if I increment it, I want to actually then check this condition again, because maybe this array is already special. If it is, we don't need to try to increase the array. Why should we try to do that? We want to find the next special array at the next element. So actually, I'm going to change this to a loop, a while loop. 
And before we increment the left pointer, we should take the value at the left pointer, nums of L, and remove it from bits of i. Well, this loop up here added it to bits of i, added a particular number, nums of r. So now we want to take nums of L and remove it. We could kind of take this code and just add it here. It's a loop, but it only runs 32 times, so it's not inefficient. But we could also modularize this code if we want to. You can create a function like this. I will call it a bits update. So it'll take the bits array and it's going to take a number. Now, the problem here is that here we want to increment the count of bits of i for each bit that's set in the number. But down here, we actually want to do the opposite. We want to decrement bits of i for each bit set. So I'll just pass in a second parameter because we're either going to be incrementing by one or decrementing by one for the bit set. So I'll call it the diff. It'll either be positive one or negative one. So now I'm just going to copy, we'll cut this code actually and put it up here. I'll replace this number with the diff. I'll replace nums of r with n and bits can stay as it is. So now I'm going to replace the code that was here with the function call, passing in bits, passing in nums of r, passing in positive one. And then I'm gonna copy this and do the same thing down here, except this is gonna be nums of l, this is gonna be negative one. And since we updated bits, the loop is gonna execute again we're going to check this condition, but now current or is out of date. Current or should be in sync with the bits because it's just the integer representation of the bits. So now I have to copy and paste this code inside of here, or I could put this in a function. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll call it take the individual bits and convert it to integer, bits to integer, because that's literally what this is doing. So give me some bits and it will return an integer. So I'll call it result. Um, I'll just cut and paste this here, uh, replace this with result and return the result. And now this code down here can be replaced with the function called bits to int, passing in bits. And then down here, after updating this, we can also update current or just by kind of copy and pasting this line down here. I hope by explaining my thought process and refactoring this code, even though I know the video turned out longer than it probably needed to be, if you're a beginner, I hope you realize how these solutions that people come up with, it's not magic. There is a thought process many people are following. Ooh, and somehow I forgot that we want our left pointer to never be out of bounds. Like this loop is incrementing left and specifically it can end up out of bounds because there's an edge case where K can be equal to zero, in which case our current OR will also be equal to zero. And then like this loop will clearly run forever because you know that will always be greater and this will keep incrementing. So to avoid that, let's add the case where left is less than or equal to R. We don't want that pointer to cross the other pointer. So let's give this a run. You can see it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, I highly recommend checking out neatcode.io for a pattern-based learning approach. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.